I'm Gary Elkan. We're here at Dallas International Film Festival. We're here with Don't Look in the Basement 2, director and producer. We've got Anthony Brownrigg, and we've got producer David Ranke. Guys, um, this is such a unique film in that the history of it, obviously, not just your connection, but you know, you, you've got cast members that have come back. Mm -hmm. You've got other family, you know, Jack Bennett's son, I think, was also working on this. Or? Well, Deuce, we weren't able to get Deuce, as a matter of fact. Oh. We were trying to get Deuce on it, but I mean, schedules are sometimes difficult for this kind of a thing. But, but uh, we did have uh, a Daniel Red, who's one of the producers. Right. Uh, his father used to work with my father. His father owned the film lab PSI that developed the film for Don't Look in the Basement. And Don McGee. And Dawn McGee, who was the daughter of Bill McGee, who played Sam in the original film, she came back, and Camilla Carr from the original cast. She's in it. Her back. Yeah, we brought her back in a different role. And the house, the house is the same. Exactly. Yeah. Exact same house. How does the? I mean, forty years later, what? How's that experience been like being able to it, to it do was, this? It was surreal in one way, but but just perfectly natural, and it just worked like a. It's yeah. It was really it was really kind of weird because I mean there had been times over the years. It was in Tawakana, Texas, mm -hmm. uh, by the uh, Trinity Institute. It's a dormitory, and Dad shot the first movie there in 1972. And throughout the years, he'd wanted to make a sequel, and so every now and again, he would go and visit the place and take pictures because he was going to plan on something else. And so walking in there and going, oh, this is the room where Dad shot this scene. This is the room where this happened. This room where that happened is really kind of spooky. And for anybody else that had seen the film, it's it's just like weird because the house is a real personality all its own. And that really attributed a lot to the film, I think. Yeah, I mean the house kind of hmm. breathes. It's you know it's a hundred over a hundred years old, I think. And yeah. you know the floors creak and you know the doors creak. And when you walk, oh, yeah. it, the house sort of speaks, you know. So, yeah. But it, it was great. You know, when Sam comes into it first and he's he's sitting in the room itself and he has those flashbacks, that's mm -hmm. kind of, did you guys have that moment like, you know, oh God, I've I've seen this, this exact thing, that's it, creepy. It's funny because I think almost uh, Scott Tepperman and Jim O'Reilly, yeah. when they got there, and Camilla, and a couple other people, when they hit the house, the first thing they wanted to see was, we want to see room four. Oh. We want to see where it happened. Where was the big, the big ending of the first film? And there's only one room that they shot that in. And so we'd take into the room and everybody would kind of stand around and go, oh, this, is where they, this is where they mutilated her. This, oh, that's where they did that with the thing on the, you know, so it was crazy. It was, yeah, it was really kind of a neat experience for everybody involved, I think. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was, a, we set up camp and lived there and ate there and slept there. Uh, they had a kitchen. I mean, the place is great. Jim Parker owns it and he was very gracious and mm -hmm. his, his staff was great with us. and. And we brought some chefs, and we just lived there, and slept there, and ate there, and uh, you know, and filmed there, and obviously. <laughs> so. Well, can y'all talk about that family environment? I mean, we know that Chuck. I mean, he was on Pearl. I oh mean, yeah. This this <laughs> is a it's a lot of connective kings in the movie. King yeah, plays yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We 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 roped King into <laughs> doing a camera. Well, we part. were looking for someone because uh, you know, when uh, we cast uh, Willie Minor in, in the role of Sam. Uh, we had lost uh, Bill McGee hmm. to us a while back. And so we had to do a flashback, and it was like, well, we need to get someone that's in the age of the original Sam from the first film. And we looked all over the place trying to find someone, and, and eventually it was just like, well, why don't we use King? <laughs> King would be perfect for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. so we brought King. And he did a hell of a job. Yeah. He really did. Yeah, but it was great. I mean, like I said, it was kind of a, a blending of families. It's just the whole thing is weird because... You know, Tony's family and all his contacts and then a lot of people I'd worked with for the last 20 years, like Chuck Hatcher, who's just one of the most awesome DPs on the planet. Love and Chuck. Uh, um, You know, and a lot of the cast and crew, we've uh, Tony and I had worked with for years and years. Of course, it's a complete Texas cast and crew. Yeah. I mean, almost everybody in the film was from the Dallas area and had worked around here. And uh, it's kind of cream of the crop, some of the best people. I mean, people don't realize what a deep talent pool we have here in this area. Yeah. And, uh, so we're lucky, you know, we've worked with these guys over the years. And uh, and, uh, and then, of course, Danny and Tony, uh, Danny Red, the other producer, and the other, we have uh, Andrew Sinsenegg, Danny Red, and I were the executive producers. Mm -hmm. And then, but Danny's dad worked with Tony's dad back in the day. And uh, so there's just a lot of connective tissue all the way through this thing. And uh, Yeah, I've never worked on a film where everything kind of fell into place so quickly. I think the entire deal took about two hours to do. I was yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny called me up and he's like, "Hey, I got this guy Tony uh, Brownrigg in my office. Uh, we're talking about this." I'm like, "Okay, I'll come down." 
Yeah. We hashed it out in about an hour and a half or two hours. Yeah, it was. I mean, I talked about doing it for of years. And Danny and I were just talking in the office one day, and I was talking about another film or something. He goes, well, why don't you do that basement film? And I was like, yeah, okay. He says, okay, well, let, call, let me call somebody. And they got on the phone, you were over there in an hour, and it's like, okay, oh, yeah, and I know this guy, Andrew Sensenick, who I already knew. And it was and, in and I And I had wanted to use in something else for a while. We talked about, you know, wanting to work on something together for a while. And I said, yeah, I know Andrew. I'd love to have Andrew involved. So Andrew got involved. And yeah, everything kind of fell into place like amazingly fast. And, and well, everybody you, worked. you worked with, uh, you know, a red Victoria with yeah. uh, uh, Ariana. And um, yeah. mm -hmm. let's talk about this cast. Um, yeah. uh, I was blown away by Frank. I, my first ever interview was oh, with yeah. Frank and, and Justin, yeah. uh, Ariana's husband. And, you know, I always give him a hug whenever I see him. Yeah. There's no way in hell I'm hugging him now after seeing this. Yeah, he's, he's, like yeah, his yeah. character is really well fleshed out and creepy as hell. Like he, yeah. he did an amazing job. Frank Frank Mosley is is and Arianne too. Yeah. I mean Arianne, Andrew, Frank, uh, Megan Emmerich, who's mm -hmm. still new on the scene. She co-wrote the script with me, and um, uh, then the whole rest of the community, Kim Foster and Jim uh, uh, Jim O'Rear and Scott Tepperman as the oh, as the two, yeah. They, I mean, the whole cast just kind of fell. The casting was very, very oh, fast. And, and Tony Anthony's mom, Lily, is in there, and the very first yeah, scene, the very first scene. That's and my she, mother. she, she. Oh wow, of, okay. That was one of the first oh, scenes we Hall. shot. It makes and sense. Yeah. She she met my father on the set of The Naked Witch. My mother is a Larry Buchanan film. Mm -hmm. My mother was The Naked Witch, and my father was the sound man. Wow. So, so she hadn't acted in years, and she gave it up to raise me. So when we got this, it was like, well, we're shooting this thing, you know. Yeah, Tony's like, hey, I'd like to put my mom in this scene. I'm kind of like, <laughs> okay, it's not a big scene. It's okay. And then there was one of the first scenes we shot, and she comes in there, and she just kills it. And, and everybody, everybody standing around is like, oh, my God, we gotta, she, we've got really got to raise the bar here. It she did. Just, she just killed it. She <laughs> came in and just blew everybody away. She's playing a patient with Alzheimer's and all this and stuff. And it's like, wow. And everybody in the cast and crew kind of got those tingles and go, okay, this movie might actually be something really cool. So it was like, you know, it really grew from there. And yeah. I think everybody set the tone. Cast and crew started inputting their own ideas as we were going along. And it was like, well, that's a great idea. Why don't we use that? And, we'll only, and so it started growing out of just a little low-budget horror film into something that was a lot more in-depth and more character-driven. Well, even like Kim, Kim Foster's yeah. character, yeah. her little moment has yeah. a whole story in itself and right. her interacting with him. I, I love that scene. That was one of my favorite scenes. Was like, yeah. that's so, because you Chester, do... Chester, yeah. Rushing. Oh, with yeah. The, Another the hat. Another amazing yeah. talent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all, even all of our, you know, secondary characters almost would try and steal the show. You oh, know? my gosh. They really brought yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, we wanted to make, when, when, when Emmerich and I were working on the script, we wanted to make sure that even the little cameo, there, we didn't want any just regular extras. Mm -hmm. We wanted everybody to have kind of a little bit of a moment as much as possible, as much as we could. And so, yeah, with Chester, who was fantastic, and then Kim, who was great, and then Brady, Brady McGinnis, who was in the, the smoking scene with uh, Frank. He's absolutely floored us. And I, you know, there's and, such and, talent um, in Texas. The, um, oh, the, the girl that the, the, the she's the, eating the Chester, um, uh, Kim or no, Kim, Kim Foster. No, Kim, uh, no, the other. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, mine's gone blank. You know, uh, I'm, I've got to save the world. Um, what's her name? Um, oh my, Carol, Carol King. Carol, yeah, uh, Carolyn King. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. And she, so she did. A, yeah. Sorry, Carolyn Carol, like, King. Well, there's so name. many. It's it's hard to. I mean, there's no real, there's no person I can say is that this was just the one standout performance of the film. Everybody had their standout moments in the film. It's definitely an amazing ensemble cast. It's a big cast. It yeah. doesn't look like a big cast when you go into it, but then you realize that all these characters are going to have their moments. It didn't feel like a big cast, did it? I mean, no, it was, no, it was, but, but uh, We I had agree. barbecues you know, in the back it. at the yeah. end of the day, and it was like, you know, yeah. it, was it was like summer camp. Wow. It was really cool. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, what's it like being able to, to be here at the Dallas International Festival to have basically a homecoming, if you will, uh, a chance to show it here in Texas, and, you know, a lot of these people do live here in Dallas. What's that like? It's uh, so you said it's like a homecoming. I mean, it's just fun. Um, yeah, it's great that we're premiering here, and it's great that you know we'll have our home team behind us. But um, it really is a big family, and you know we're, we we really are happy to be able to. 
to make this film that Tony wanted to make and also you know, to, to include all of our friends and, and co-workers that we really believe in and showcase their talents. So. Yeah, it's, it's a real honor. It really is a big honor and uh, Dad would, would love it. And, and Dallas just yeah. has a great film scene. That it's not as well known as a lot of other places, but there's a real deep, you know, vibrant scene here of people who are passionate and really want to show what they can do. So that's our plans, keep doing this and do it with lots more things here. So. Is there a catharsis in being able to you know, wrap the story and complete the story like this? I mean, it... it yes. Yeah. Dad wanted to make a sequel for years, and we talked about it. And he basically... I took all of his notes that we talked about over the years, mm -hmm. and then with, with uh, Megan Emmerich and, and then David, and of course Andrew sat in on it too, and we kind of worked out this how it's going to... how it's going to complete this story 40 years later. And I incorporated a lot of the things that Dad wanted to see in the sequel. Mm. And which are some important things in the in the film and so you know i just i've always had this nightmare of dad coming up from the grave and saying what did you do with the film <laughs> so but i think he'd be very happy so i would make a good third film your dad coming yeah, back yeah, yeah that would hey be, that's a good that, idea that's a good idea we'll write that down yeah and camilla of course was well was she's got to be yeah yeah camilla was fantastic it's great to have her yeah. wow well i'm 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 really excited to uh to see what the reaction of the fans because this is uh it is creepy, it's scary, but it is, it's suspenseful. It keeps you on your toes, but wanting what's gonna happen. I love it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much for uh, bringing the so film much. and thanks for making it. Really right. appreciate it. Thank We're you We're honored much. to be here. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys. Good to see you.